Okay, we're going to take a look at section 2.3 and we're going to define something called a matrix and look at some basic operations on that. So in terms of what we're going to do is we'll first list out the goals for this section, define what matrices are, define operations between matrices and vectors, and then we'll relate that to finding solutions to linear equations. Okay, so in terms of what we expect, we expect you to be able to take a linear system of equations and express it four different ways. And the new way that we have is using a matrix. Um, we expect you to look at the matrix and then determine whether or not uh, the system is consistent and figure out how many solutions, if any, are available to you. And we expect you to be able to perform some basic matrix vector operations. And finally, we expect you to be able to go through and figure out uh, what are the conditions that are going to be necessary for there to always be a solution uh, given the matrix A for a system of equations. Okay, so first thing is, is what is a matrix? Matrix is basically just a bunch of numbers, and we're going to arrange them in terms of rows and columns. Um, so if you look at this, we've got M rows going across, and then N, as in November, columns. And each one of those columns is going to be going up and down. Um, one thing that's going to be important is to be able to think about this and look at this in terms of the columns. So later on we'll talk about how we look at this in terms of columns and what that means. Okay? In terms of nomenclature, how do we talk about this? Uh, we talk about the number of rows and columns. So for example, a matrix with four rows and three columns is shown here. So we've got one, two, three, four rows and one, two, three columns. And we'll call that a four by three matrix. And sometimes if we want to get fancy, we'll call it uh, R four by three. And basically, this just means that the numbers are real numbers. And we have four rows and three columns. Again, it's going to be important to look at this and think about this not as a bunch of numbers. So in this case, we've got what, 12 numbers. Is one way to think about this is in terms of the columns. Okay. So we would like to be able to think about this in terms of column 1, which is minus 4, 8, 3, minus 9. Column 2, which is 2, minus 2, 1, 6. And column 3, which is 1, 0, 7, 4. Oops. I said column 3. OK. So you'll see me write this as column 1 column two, column three. By the way, there's nothing sacred about calling these A's or V's or whatever. So you may also see me write as V1, V2, V3. It all means the same thing. This is just referring to each column. Okay. So if you see this kind of notation, this is this first column, this is the second column, and that's the third column. And we can think about these matrices in many different ways. Okay, so what do we have? We have this bunch of numbers arranged in rows and columns. And we can think of the columns as being vectors. And in general, we have M as in Mike rows and N as in November columns. Uh, we can write it like this. And if we write this in terms of vectors, then this vector is going to have M rows, M rows, M rows. Each of these is going to have M rows, and there's got to be N of these column vectors. Okay? And again, we may call this R, M by N. All right, so why is this a big deal? Um, we've seen that we can write a system of linear equations like this. We've seen that we can also write this, oops, and this form, these are all equivalent forms. All right, and we saw that these, uh, we're going to ask is there a linear combination of these vectors that we can write like this? And basically, the matrix allows us to write this in a more compact form. So we can basically think of these as going to be columns of our matrix.
And if we multiply by some vector x1, x2, x3, we'll get something like this. Okay, so we've got, we can write it like that. And we're going to define matrix vector multiplication. Let me go back real quick and note it here. If I were to write this as a vector, I can take the, or sorry, as a matrix, take the first vector and put it in the first column, take the second vector, write it in the second column, take the third vector, and write it in the first column. And now looking at this column, this column, and this column, that's going to define my matrix. And if I define matrix multiplication to be this form, then going back to my original system of equations, this is equal to that. And if I make this equal to 0 minus 20, this is exactly the same thing as the original system of equations. So there's no difference. Okay, So we basically we have different ways we can write this. If I start off with this linear system of equations, we found out we can represent this in terms of an augmented matrix. All right, that was the first way we looked at this. So we have the linear system of equations is one way. Writing it as an augmented matrix is one way. Writing it as a vector equation is one way. And the newest way is this idea of taking this and writing it as a matrix A times a vector X is going to equal some vector B. So our vector B here is 0, 20. This is our vector X, and this is our A. And the question then becomes, what are these values for X given the system of equations? Right? So these are all equivalent methods. And we want to be able to figure out under what conditions can we find values for x1, x2, and x3. Now, some of you may be upset here because your high school teacher probably told you a different way to do this. Okay. So your high school teacher may have told you you go across rows and down the column. So if you do that, you're going to have 2 times x1 plus minus 1 times x2 plus 4 times x3 then go across this row and down the column so you'll have 4 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus minus 5 times x3 now note if we do that I can break this up into three pieces I've got the x1's the x2s and the x3s. So I can write that as the sum of three vectors. All right. So uh, if you're going by the way you might have, might have seen this in high school, this matrix times this vector gives you this. I can break this up into three pieces. And now notice this is really a scalar times 2, 4. And this is going to be the scalar x2 times minus 1, 1. This is going to be the scalar x3 times 4 minus 5. And this is exactly like what we were talking about in the previous slide. So this is basically saying that if I look at this in terms of that column, that column and that column. I can think of this as x1 times the first column, x2 times the second column, x3 times the third column. So either way you want to think about this is fine. It's exactly the same. But thinking about it in terms of the columns of the matrix is going to help you in the long run. So this is going to be a really nice way to think about this. And the way we're going to really try to focus on looking at what is the meaning of this statement. Okay, all right. So what's important here is we just defined a new operation, a times a vector, right? and we said we're going to work with systems of this form. Uh, one thing we need to be careful about is what is this? Ax equals b is going to be oops, x1 v1 plus x2 v2 
and you go on and on and on to x n v n and you say that's equal to b well this needs to make sense first of all we have that these v1s have to be the same dimension of b's so the number of rows of a right, has to be m because the number of rows of b are m and we're going to have to also have that um, the number of rows of x has to equal the number of columns of this. So x must have n rows and a must have n columns. So this statement you need to be careful about and make sure that it makes sense in terms of the way these operations are defined. All right, so now given these operations, um, there's going to be certain things that make sense. We've seen things like r times u and u plus v, and the question is, is does it matter which order that you do these? And it's going to turn out no. So I'm not going to prove this, but basically the same op the old operations that we've seen before carry through and are consistent. And I can factor out the r here, and here I can distribute addition, and it makes sense.